chapter 8.6, uh, we're using a just-in-time method to have a reordering point. Uh, we show you how to monitor the inventory level and reissue an order when the inventory is, is falling uh, under the inventory point level. So let's start. Um, for example, the order takes about 50 to 65 minutes lead time to replenish uh, the inventory with a given order quantity. And the model parameters I set up is available inventory in the beginning is 250 for subassembly A, 250 for subassembly B, 500 for connector. Reorder point is 125 for subassembly A and subassembly B, 250 is the connector. Each time when we order, we place the order with amount of 200 for subassembly A and two assembly B, and 250 for uh, the connector. So let's see how we start doing this, and uh, we're going to go through this and from the slides one by one, and we see that. Okay, so now we're going going to changing from 8.5. And this time we show you we don't no longer need the timer anymore, so we can remove that. Um, also in the processing portion, this process one, we don't re need that anymore. So uh, we're using a different approach. First we putting on a so-called three more uh, properties in the order, uh, in the system. Uh, we can also call it uh, integer. We're adding three more here, and um, <clears throat> we call this uh, okay. Reordering, reorder point for subassembly A, sorry, B, and for subassembly uh, for connector. Okay, and also I'm adding a sync uh, to represent. I'm just adding another sync over here. Uh, represent the inventory uh, uh, replenishment. And we're going to add three more, uh, three more so source to. Simulate as the arrival or creation of uh, inventory subassembly A. We order subassembly B, for example. And this is the source for connector. Okay. Um, we're going to use a time path since we don't simulate the distance, we simulate the time for the lead time portion. And all of them are pretty much travel time is random uniform distribution between 50 to 65 minutes. So this is how we're going to simulate that, and <clears throat> and also we going to do a also we're going to do a so-called monitor items. Also, this is we're going to show you from here on the. On the top, we shall monitor. I'm going to add three more monitor. Okay, and each one will call them monitor A, monitor B, and monitor C. Okay, so monitor A is keep track of the inventory level for. Uh, 
for subassembly A. So here I'm going to say uh, is going to be monitoring uh, monitor type is supposed to be crossover. Okay, and what we're trying to uh, monitor is the quantity available. So subassembly A quantity available. Okay, when the quantity available uh, lower than the uh, reordering point. So here we call the reordering point for subassembly A. Okay, if it's lower than that, if it cross by from positive to negative cross direction, so it cross from positive to negative. And then we trigger this event, we call the monitor A event. And same thing, we're going to do this for. Uh, <clears throat> so we're using this monitor. So every time the subassembly A quantity available is lower than uh, the order from the positive point, uh, from higher than the reordering point go to below the reordering point, which is this negative cross direction. And then we trigger an event called monitor A event. Same thing, we're going to do uh, the same thing for monitor B. Instead of uh, we're using self-assembly. <clears throat> B quantity available. Same thing, uh, initial threshold is supposed to be reordering point for subassembly B as go to negative portion. Same thing for monitor C. Negative. So now we have three different possible uh, trigger, and when they come in from the top and going lower than the order, reordering point we specify, then this event trigger. So we need to actually <coughs> adding uh, that as well. Next, what we're going to do is. Uh, We're going to trigger the arrival of the material uh, from this event. Uh, so these three sources are going to generate a order. And actually, every time the monitor uh, event trigger. So what we do is instead of it here, look at this arrival mode. Instead of uh, inter arrival time, I'm going to say on event. And it's going to ask me what event I'm going to uh, trigger this. So every time it's a so-called model A event, I'm going to trigger one arrival for uh, so one event count and entity per arrival. Each event I'm going to generate one entity right here. So it's one order. And of course I'm going to put on one of these. Uh, we call it a Subassembly A. Oop. Material. Okay. Subassembly A material. I'm going to enlarge a little bit and change a color. Okay. And do another one for subassembly B. Change the color to, okay. and also do another one. Material for connector. Just show and tell you have this, and same thing over here. Go to the arrival model as arrival is based on the event and choose the proper monitor event, so my event B, 
and this one too. Choose onion bin and choose the proper bin monitor bin connector. So each time the bin fire and will generate one more bin process. And also now the last portion we trying to um, <clears throat> simulate when the parts actually this entity reach to the end of each each one of this path. Uh, each one of the paths we're going to rename these call uh, time path A. Later on, we're going to be easier, and this one called it time path B, and this one we're going to call it time path C. Okay. So each one of those, when the entity reach to the end of this deliver time, this is representing uh, simulate the lead time, and then we're going to replenish the product. So here we're going to use an add-on event. When they reach to the end, I'm going to add a process uh, steps called produce. Actually, I can produce the okay. Produce a material called subassembly A with the quantity we call the order quantity for A. Okay, same thing for this reach to the end. I'm also adding a process. Uh, it's going to be copy and paste this over. Instead, uh, this we're going to do B or quantity of B. And we're going to do the same thing again. So when we reach to the end, and this replace the connector with the order quantity of connector. So and let's see how this we're going to set initial rough now you see and the model parameter we have initial inventory order quantity and reordering point so here we're going to base on the original uh, original presentation we set it uh, the available initially is 250, 250, 500. Reordering points 125, 125, 250. Order quantity is 200, 200, 250. So I'm going to just put these in initially 250, 250, 500. Um, order quantity is 200, 200, 250. And reorder in points 125, 125, uh, 250. Okay, let's see how this works. Okay, you see the inventory got replenished. Each time it lower than the reordering point. And I think I using the wrong entity so here I'm going to use material subassembly A material subassembly B and here I'm going to generate material connector so it will show you a little bit more correct thing okay let's do that again Okay, you see different material coming in and how they get updated. Uh, replenishment. So uh, 
uh, how to determine the uh, initial in, uh, ordering quantity and and the reordering point is the production inventory control in IMSC 633 uh, subjects and here we just show you how we can use simulation uh, to perform an inventory control uh, process and how to do adjusting time inventory and placement. Let's conclude this subsection.